Okay, good afternoon. I'm going to be talking to you about the sodium ATPase uh, as it's related to primarily heart disease. I come to you from Panorama Research. We're located down here near Moffett Field in Silicon Valley. SENS is located up here on Pioneer, a couple of the other famous folks from our part of the world. PRI was founded uh, now over 20 years ago. Uh, we've spun out a number of companies and had six IPOs. The most recent was Calabios, which went public back in, in um, February. The regeneration, rejuvenation or regeneration research that's going on uh, in our institute includes a focus on aging of the cardiovascular system. And we are developing a number of novel therapies for heart failure and chronic myocardial ischemia, CMI. We've uh, used bispecific antibodies to target stem cells into the heart for myocardial infarction and for CMI. We're developing cardiomyokines, which are antibody-directed trophic factors. We're developing um, anti-cardiotonic steroid human monoclonal antibodies, and I'll be talking to you about our anti-NKA or sodium potassium ATPase uh, antibodies. So heart failure is a, is a major problem. You heard yesterday that I guess we're all going to die of it. Uh, lots of visits. Half of these patients are still symptomatic. A quarter of them uh, are re-hospitalized within a month, uh, and this cost uh, is very significant. And it's a totally unsolved problem, really. In chronic heart failure, uh, it becomes acute. Fluid retention ends up being a major cause of, of symptoms. Uh, about 5% of the patients that come in with acute decompensated heart failure go to the ICU. Some of these patients then get a, a, a series of, of drugs. Uh, uh, this is a diuretic for osmide Lasix. They uh, <clears throat> may get di vasodilators uh, and in the worst case get enotropes or drugs that increase the, the um, strength of, of, of the, the, the uh, heart contraction. Um, each of these theories, each of these therapies really does not work very well. Diuretics have a lot of problems. Vasodilators uh, have not been shown to improve uh, outcomes. And the existing enotropes uh, really drive the, the heart to work harder, contract more forcefully, and that can in, induce uh, arrhythmias. So we've been looking at the sodium ATPase, which plays a key role in homeostasis, not only in the heart, but uh, throughout the entire uh, body. Uh, and, and it's uh, intimately linked to, to a muscle, heart muscle contraction. Uh, and interestingly, it, it accounts for up to 20% of the rest of the energy expense of all of us. Uh, I'll talk about its structure in a second. There's a lot of tissue isotypes uh, that can be used for uh, antibody uh, targeting. This molecule becomes dysfunctional uh, in aging, hypertension. I'll talk a little bit about preeclampsia, diabetes, cancer. Um, in heart failure, there's a 40% reduction. This is a schematic of this 10 transmembrane protein. Cardiotonic steroids, I'll talk about in a second, they have, the, the sites of binding have been uh, isolated, and the place for our antibody is going to be over here between loops uh, 7 and 8. The sodium uh, potassium ATPase uses ATP to move three sodiums out and two potassiums in, okay? Uh, and then that gets exchanged for sodium, the sodium it gets exchanged for calcium, and the calcium drives contractility of the heart. So the antibody uh, is a human monoclonal antibody. It recognizes that, that loop I mentioned, and we think that it will beneficially modulate cardiac function because it, 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 we, we will show you in a second that it's enotropic and uh, cardioprotective and not arrhythmogenic, and this will be a novel therapy for acute and chronic heart failure. So the story of heart failure uh, really begins with William Withering. He popularized Digitalis or Fox Club uh, back in the, the late 1700s. Okay, um, and and here's here's the plant that this comes from. Uh, Digitalis has been used now for uh, 250 years to treat heart failure, uh, and it and other cardiotonic steroids inhibit the sodium ATPase. Okay, so that leaves the sodium concentration higher inside the cell. It's exchanged with calcium, and that that ends up augmenting the calcium flux, which uh, mediates the positive enotropic effect and and in, uh, anti-arrhythmic effect. However, it actually has a very narrow therapeutic index. It's arrhythmogenic. Uh, it, lead, it can lead to uh, cardiac fibrosis and uh, long-term outcomes are poor. This just gives you an example. This is a 
paper published in the New England Journal of Medicine back in, in 1997, and it really, uh, digoxin did really not uh, improve uh, overall um, survival. So there are a number of endogenous receptors. This is just a list of some of them. Uh, sodium ATPase, NKA, is the receptor uh, in the body for, for uh, digitalis. These are some of the cardiotonic steroids uh, I've mentioned. Dig, a very interesting one I'll only talk about uh, briefly is M MBG. This is Marina Bufa Ingenin. It's a, the same uh, molecule that comes from frog or toad skin and it's been used in Chinese medicine for uh, 2,000 years to treat heart failure. And MDG is an endogenous cardiotonic steroid. It's made by our bodies, and it's increased in hypertension, preeclampsia, and in aging. And it drives uh, fibrosis. I don't have time to go into, into detail, but, but it, it blocks the sodium potassium ATPS, but it, it ends up signaling <coughs> through SARC, through PKC, and uh, through uh, FLY1, to uh, promote collagen and fibrosis. Don't have time to really go into that, but you can understand how you might want to block this to block this this uh, pathway. And that has in fact been done. It turns out that digibine um, <coughs> is is a digoxin antibody that's used to reverse dig toxicity, and it's actually been uh, used as a fab uh, in in the fab form to to treat severe eclampsia. And there's some phase three clinical trials ongoing presently for this purpose. So it turns out that sodium ATPase is, is more than a pump, and it signals, and, and uh, the unique site we've identified on, on the NKA activates the, the molecule, not inhibits it, and that initiates cardioprotection. What we think is happening is here's the normal calcium transients, here's an enotrope like DIG coming, be, coming above some toxic uh, calcium level, and the, the antibody is below this. So that's our hypothesis. So the question is, can these antibodies provide uh, benefit beyond uh, DISH and, and other cardiotonic steroids? So I'm going to tell you about some active immunization studies, some polyclonal studies, and then targeting this with a, a human antibody. So these are the active immunization studies. The treatment was to take that loop, immunize these uh, spontaneous uh, <coughs> hypertensive heart failure rats, and you can see that the rats under normal conditions die of heart failure. Okay. This is fractional shortening, which is a, is a, a measure of, of the cardiac function, and those that were immunized uh, were protected long term. So in passive immunization, we've made a rabbit affinity purified antibody to that region. Here you can see the uh, NK activity is increased uh, in, in rat cells, and here's in mouse cardiomyocytes. And, the um, EC50s are, are, are quite respectable. Then we looked at stimulation of, of uh, cardiomyocyte uh, contractility. Here's normal rabbit serum. Here's increased contractility, trans twist amplitude with the uh, antiserum. Uh, when you look at twist amplitude, here you can another uh, illustration of that. Here's cell shortening is increased. Uh, here's cell length uh, is, is increased as a dose response. Um, we've looked at calcium fluxes, they're increased, uh, and the amplitudes are increased, all suggesting that this, this has uh, a beneficial effect in terms of cardiomyocyte uh, contractility. We've looked in, in a um, rat heart ex vivo uh, ischemia reperfusion model to look at protection. Uh, the uh, hearts are, are perfused, uh, there's an ischemic period of 30 minutes, and then a reperfuse, and this is where a lot of injury occurs in the enotropic effect, this is left ventricular diastolic uh, pressure. Basically, you can see that the antibody provides nice protection uh, versus the, the uh, controls. Um, when we looked at the genes in the heart, you can see an increase in um, AKT and uh, ERK-1-2 in the treated but uh, not in the control. So now we've moved to, to making a human monoclonal antibody. Uh, we've made that from, uh, we've identified it from a phage library. Um, the loop 7A is the target of this. The KD of this in numerous assays is, is in the, the low nanomolar range, range. Uh, and we've made an A-glycosyl IgG for purposes of therapy. This antibody, in contrast to DIG, uh, stimulates the activity of the uh, sodium uh, ATPase here. So dose response. Um, 
We've looked at, at activation of SARC, which is in that signaling pathway. Here you can see the dose response for that. Um, and we looked at, at the uh, induction of protective genes. Here's phospho, uh, AKT, and, and ERK, uh, both increased by, by the uh, antib antibody treatment of, of rat uh, cardiomyocytes. And then we looked at, at card protection against reperfusion injury in vitro, and, and uh, this is a measure of cytotoxicity, and there's less cytotoxic uh, effect in, in those treated with the, with the uh, antibody. So this is a, a work in progress. Uh, we have uh, ongoing cardiodynamic function studies with this in isolated cards, and we plan on evaluating this in heart failure models. This is just a couple of the ones that we plan to, to use, including the SHHF uh, uh, hypertensive rats. Um, and then if, if these are successful, PK talks and, and expanded mechanism studies. So I'll just end with this, looking at the mechanism of this. It looks like this stimulates rather than inhibits the, the sodium ATPase. Uh, one can look at the flux of calcium to investigate the mechanism of this. And, and what you see here is the, is the influx of calcium. Uh, here's Wabin giving a, a large boost of calcium. Uh, here's the the antibody giving a much smaller but, uh, boost of calcium. And then when you look at, at blockers of the um, <coughs> calcium exchanger, the uh, sodium uh, calcium exchanger or the L-type, uh, LTCCs, the L-type calcium channels, um, what you can see is that the, uh, it looks like the NKA is, is stimulating or, or uh, modulating a um, smaller increase of calcium and it's primarily through the LTCC. So that would be our model, that, it, that this would be beneficial uh, and could be a, a new therapy for uh, congestive heart failure and chronic myocardial ischemia. So the key points in the talk are, this is a huge problem with our aging population. Treatment op options are, are limited. Uh, heart transplant is the final common pathway for many patients. Uh, this appears to be a very interesting target to modulate this this derangement that occurs in congestive heart failure. Uh, conventional therapies like cardiotonic steroids inhibit the NKA. Lots of, of bad outcomes, low therapeutic index and cardiac fibrosis. This uh, molecule turns out to be a, a, a molecule that signals and, and can be used uh, to uh, modulate homeostasis and we've identified a new monoclonal antibody to stimulate it. It appears to be uh, enotropic and cardioprotective in vitro, um, and we think this, is, this may be a novel therapy for uh, what we call the NK apathies. So I'll end there if there are any questions. Thank you very much.